Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's talk about Lang Graph Studio. In my earlier video, I showed you what is Lang Graph and how to create agents with Lang Graph. So in this particular video, I will show you how you can install Lang Graph Studio in your machine. And just to point out already now that as of August 16, it only works for Apple Silicon Max. So in the future, maybe there will be support for other machines also. So yeah, by the end of the video, you will see something like this in the screen because I will take the same example. On the left side, you can see the flow of the agents and on the right side, you can see the output of that in the UI itself. Let's get started. Okay, first thing first, what is Langgraph Studio? As I said, it's the IDE, but what is the main purpose of that? Langgraph Studio provides a specialized agent IDE for visualizing as you can see here, we can visualize it, interacting with and debugging complex agentic applications. So I will provide the link here. You can just go through here and there are other basic information. Okay, what is Lang Graph? When was it introduced and so on. And here is main part of this Lang Graph Studio. You can go through this. And by the way, we also need to have the account of Lang Smith and we need to also have a Docker. I will show you how to do those things. And then you can see, this is how it shows. There is a GitHub repo. Here is some of the videos that they have uploaded already in the blog post also. So yeah, now let's go into the main uh, Lang Graph Studio uh, GitHub repository. And here, this is just the information that I just mentioned you before. And it is in the beta phase, right? And what we need to do is first we need to have the Lang Smith account in order to use this. So it is verified from the Lang Smith. So if I click this Lang Smith, if you don't have the Lang Smith account, you need to sign up for this, right? First, I will uh, right click this, open in a new tab. So it will be opening here. I already have the account. So maybe I will first log in. Okay, now as you can see on the screen, I'm already logged in and there are three different projects. You just need to first log in into Lang Smith. So when we start our Lang Graph Studio, it will authorize from there. So that is one step. Let me go back. And then here it says download. So here is the link to download. There is the .dmg. So you can just click this and then it will download and it's just normal downloading as in a normal computer so you can just click this before that it says here langgraph studio requires docker compose version 2.20 plus higher so you need to install docker first here is the link also being provided you can go through this but yeah just go to the docker website and to download the docker then we will have the docker compose already there right just to show you uh, let's see the docker compose version so I have here version 2.29, right? So we are good to go. And yeah, I have already installed Docker and then on the top you can see here is Docker already running. So you need to, of course, uh, run the Docker. And what is the next step we need to do is to use Graph Studio, make sure you have project with the Lang Graph app. So that is one requirement also. You cannot just open Lang Graph Studio and then create application on top of it. But as of now, you need to have a project with the Lang Graph uh, app already and then you can import that so that is how it works and we will be taking this example it is mentioning here right we can click into this example now and it takes us to the lang graph example so i will be replicating this into our uh, local lang graph studio and by the way here are different steps how you can go through it and the lang graph uh, cloud is also something uh, that is there but we are not going to go through there but i will just follow or walk you through this project in the local machine first thing first you need to clone this lang graph example so if i go here i have already done this lang graph example i will go inside the lang graph example just to clone what you can do is click here uh, as https or if you have ssh set up with your github uh, account you can just copy this and then go to your terminal and here you can do git clone and then just paste uh, the thing that is copied so now it says lang graph example right i will open this in the vs code and by the way you can open in any id you want so now let me first open this so it's easier for you to explain so here the first thing that you need to do because this in this example what we are going to do is we are going to go through the web search we are going to do the web search and then providing us the answer right for that uh, there are some api keys that we need uh, but here is some api key we need to do and by default there is this uh, anthropic uh, tavili and open ai api key we are going to use the open ai and i'm not going to use the anthropic api key so what we can do 
is if you go to the term or you can do already from the id also if you are if you prefer id or you can just copy this file or and rename it to dot env you can do any of this copy or rename right so what i have done here is i have created dot env now also if you go to the terminal you can just go here and do move dot env and dot env it will rename that file to dot env or if you want to copy and uh, the command is of course i hope you know it's copy dot env and dot example example and dot env right you can do any any of this uh, whatever you want so what is inside this i have just here if you go inside env i have this api keys i'm showing you this because i'm going to revoke this but then i have now i need to provide the api keys right first let's go and provide the api key so it's easier for you also to understand what things we need to do so i will go here in the api key part first i will go with the tabli ai so i need to first sign in right i will first sign in and get back to you okay so this is where after you log in or sign in this is the page where we can get into and this is the api key i can just copy this api key and go back to our tabli api key and i will just go here and paste it just go here control v control yes and now i need to go to the open ai api key also for that i will provide the link by the way all the links there open ai api key account of course you need to have account for this and one thing just to point out here there is there was before uh, we can just create uh, the api keys now also we can create it but then it says here use legacy api keys we can create here already or it says the project specific api keys so this is the new way to isolate the api keys based on your project so here i have the default project you can just go here create a new project and create the api key just for that project also so i will just go and create here for now so this is just for land graph i will go in the default project one and i will say uh, by the way there is also the restricted only read only if you want to if you go to read only it just says read only if you go to restricted you can restrict some of the in points here right but i will go for all and create the api key once this is done i will copy this i will go back to the vs code and here i will replace this with the newly created api key i will save this now right so the environment variable part is now uh, completed and there is this json file also where uh, we can say okay dependencies is my agent and graph agent is pointing to this my agent agent.py you can see here agent.py and the graph so inside this we have this uh, agent.py right and if you scroll down you can see there is the graph so it is just pointing to the different uh, dependencies and the environment is dot env right but i can now close this and open the lang graph studio because i have already installed that so i will just go here and say lang graph studio so if i open this it didn't open so i will go here okay it's it's opening here now you can see here there is this lang graph studio and this is the example that i have already uh, used but i will close this for now just to show you and here in these settings you can see i have already logged in into the lang smith so for you you can just log out or in the beginning it will not be logged in right if i let's show you that also so now it says here when you start it says reason you need to choose which reason for me it is eu so i choose the eu part and there is the lang graph log in to the lang smith to continue i will click the log in to lang smith so you can see it points to the eu smith lang chain.com and i will log in and then get back to you once you go through the process you can just go here and now it says log out from lang smith meaning that we are already logged in and now what you can do is just click to select or drag and drop the folder so we can go here and i will take this lang graph example and i will just open it so now it will be just opening that particular project and now you can see i have docker installed if you don't have the docker installed then it will be throwing you some error you need to install docker because all the things that you can see here it is pulling the images right and all the different things is being doing because we have the docker installed and now when this is doing the things if i go to the docker let me open the docker and i will show you because all the things are here now lang graph example right so this is five days ago and so on and here in the volumes you can see there is lang graph in the image you can see there is the lang graphs three seconds ago created four seconds ago so it means that what we are doing here it is uh, it is doing under the hood into the docker and then that is being reflected here so yeah you can see here this is the same example i showed you 
I have taken from the git uh, hub repository provided by Langchain. Right, so here there is the start, there is the agent. We ask something, uh, this is the, if, if it needs to go to this action, then it will go through this one and then it will go back and then this is the end. So I have explained this in my previous video also, how we can create these uh, nodes and edges. Just for, as a reference, this is a node and these lines are the edges in the graph. So yeah, this is just the UI as you can see here. And this is reflecting the code that is uh, that is being shown that is being shown before, right? But it's a simple example. If you want to go also, you can open in VS Code. You can click this one, and it will open this in the VS Code. So whatever we now change here will be reflected there. I have already provided this env, uh, right? And then there is this requirements. There is this agent. So this is the main file where we need to be going and doing things, right? Here you can see I have uh, uncommented Anthropic and the OpenAI. But if you want to provide different models, you can just go here and provide models. And by the way, you need to have the API key also. For now, I have just provided the OpenAI. I will go back to the agent here. The UI is quite simple. Here is you can provide the, uh, let's say, ask a question from here. So if you go here, you can ask uh, from here. I can say hi and then I can submit it. And before that, if you go to this configurable, if I click this, you can see here the model name, right? I have chosen just the OpenAI for this demonstration purpose. But here, if you had other models also, you can choose which model you want to run for example you might ask different questions and test with different uh, models also that is also one option here optional i can even choose this it's the same thing because there is just one model under the hood now i can say hi and now you can see the flow right here it goes here and then it completes because here we don't need to go through the uh, tools because hi and you can see it also if i go here it shows here here it just goes to the agent and then it ends. Hello, how can I assist you today? And we are using this API key, meaning that we can search into the internet also, right? So what we will be doing now is I will go here and I will be asking what is the weather of Helsinki, right? It needs to find the weather of Helsinki, meaning that the LLM does not have the latest information of Helsinki. It needs to go through the Tabili API and it need to search for the weather and provide us the answer, right? Let's see what happens when we do this. I will just sum it here. So now, as you can see here, it goes through the agent. Now it goes to the Tabili search API. It says query current weather of Helsinki, a name this one. It goes through this weatherapi.com. And here you can see the current uh, last updated 24, 8, 30. You can just find all the information from that API and it goes here, location, Finland, Helsinki, South, all the information is there and here it provides the answer. If you go here, for example, if I go, what is the weather? That is the start and there is the AI, right? And if I go here, you can see it goes through the action part. And if I scroll a little bit down and this one, it goes back to the agent and it goes to the end. And then we get the answer. So the temperature is this, it's sunny and so on. So is there anything you would like to know? So this is the simple flow that we want, right? Okay, now let's go and see the interruption part also. So here it's called the interrupts, right? So what you can do also is instead of the answer flowing into the different agents. For example, let's say that you are creating an agent with let's say 20 tools, right? And you want to interrupt in some particular tools so that you can verify the answer and you can go and say, okay, continue. Right. Just for this example, you can go to these interrupts and choose all of them to interrupt or you can just go to this and there is add interrupt. Right. And there is add interrupt. I will say here and let's say that I want to interrupt in the action part. Let's see what happens. Right. So I will say here. OK, go here. Add message. I can just say here. What is the weather of SF? Now let's say San Francisco and I will submit it. So now it says what is the weather? And now you can see here, it goes through the tabular sorts results and it says continue. So I can say here, okay, continue. And then it goes there. So it, it says again, I need to go and do the next, uh, next thing, right? I will say continue. And then it goes now back to the agents and it provides the answer.
So you can see the flow, how we can, uh, let's say, control based on these interrupts. And when you add the interrupts here also, you can remove it from here, or you can just go on top and then do this or clear and so on. So now you are doing some prototyping here. And let's say that what is the weather of SF? You want to change already here instead of going back and forth, right? I will just go here. I will say SF instead of SF. Let's say I want to go with uh, Kathmandu. That's it. And then what I can do, fork this. So you can see that I'm saying here, what is the weather of Kathmandu? It goes through this and it provides the answer. Before we had these interruptions or interrupts here, but now we don't have the interrupts and it just go through it and finds the uh, weather of Kathmandu. It is 28.1, right? So here you can just go through this rerun. It just reruns it. This is the edit as I showed you before also. And here you can see view output at the checkpoint also. So it says here, okay, the values here, high and all the different things. So this is also one, one good part, right? And then here is this open run in the Langsmith. So I let's say that you want to visualize this into the Langsmith, how to do that also. And here is already mentioned, okay, how many tokens were there? 592 prompt tokens, zero completion tokens, and time to first token is 887 milliseconds and so on. So now let's see that what are the other things before going to the Langsmith? You can just go here on the right. You can view this in a JSON also, or then uh, pretty or you can even go here and say the new thread so it opens in a new thread you can go to this thread here and you can see we have the previous thread here and you can see i have tested many things before also and i can go to this thread and i can go here and start exploring again from here okay then now let's go and see the uh, traces of this into the langsmith right so here if there is this open run in the langsmith let me click this one so now, okay, it says that it cannot go pretty, not found, or maybe, I don't know, the link, maybe it's not showing there, but let me open from the Langsmith itself, because there should be the traces, because we configured that into the Langsmith, right? I will close this one. I will go to the previous one. So this is the one where we configured, right? I will go to this project section here. There are two projects. And here there is this default one and there is this lang graph tutorial, right? Let me see from which one I provided. I forget the one that I provided. Probably it goes into the default. Uh, let me see. Jane's uh, 16.8, 16, yeah. So this is the one. So it is going to the latest one. And now you can see here the current weather, uh, all the things can be seen in the Langsmith. So I said, hi, how can I assist you? What is the weather of Helsinki? It goes through this api and on the left side also you can see what which steps it went through and what is this uh, how much time it take and all the different things you can see this is the output this is the start time this is the data stream. and if i scroll to the right also you can see that now what is the tokens and how much does it cost in order to run that particular thing is also mentioned here and what is the uh, first time token and so on and also the metadata it says graph id if I scroll to be down and if I click here, you can see all the all the different things. If you go to the metadata here, you can see all the different things being shown here. So yeah, that is how we can view it into the Lang Smith also. This is the simple example, right? But I hope now you get the idea how to go through this and also uh, project settings. And there is also the logs. If you want to see all the different logs, what is going on under the hood, you can also go from here. And this is also the project settings. You can just go here and say, okay, which version of the Python you want to use, Python 3.12 or 3.11 dependencies is it's shown there. It is taken from this particular code and it is pointing to the environment variables. Okay, you can save and restart or then you can just close. So yeah, I hope you get the idea how it works. And I think there is still something to fix here. For some reason, this open run in the Langsmith is not pointing directly to the uh, to the configured Langsmith. We need to go to the website itself and then look into it. But yeah, this is just in the early beta phase. So yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.